Hi, I'm Gary, and this is another episode of Physical Format Rock and Roll, where we talk about all things rock and roll and classic metal. Today, we're going to do an episode of what I like to call Overlooked Gems. Now, a lot of people might not consider this album overlooked because it is fairly well known but I'll explain my reasoning. So the album that I have chose to talk about today is Made in Japan by Iron Maiden. So this was released uh, in September of 1981. It was recorded in Japan in May of the same year. So it didn't take very long between the time it was recorded until when it was released. Now, some of the things about this album uh, is the fact that this is of the Paul Diano era. So it has material from uh, the debut album and from Killers. Now, obviously, uh, it was released in September of 81. So by that time, Paul was already out of the band. This album is only an EP, uh, and that's part of the uh, problem with it, is the fact that it was done as an EP. I think it was only going to be released in Japan. I don't know that they ever really had intentions of it being a full album, or it's just the fact that by the time they got around to doing this, Paul was already out of the band, and Bruce Dickinson was in. Uh, so this only has five songs in it. And the reason I use this as one of my overlooked gems is only because I think when people talk about Iron Maiden and live albums, it's generally, generally just the Live After Death album, which granted is a fantastic live album, one of the best metal live albums of all time. But I really love this album too. And I think probably a lot of Maiden fans do, but I think there's... Some Maiden fans who have probably never even heard this album. The fact that there's only five songs on here. And the version that was done in Japan only had four songs. Now they get the title Maiden Japan. Of course is a little bit of a pun. Because Deep Purple had their famous album Made in Japan. So Made in Japan. <laughs> a little bit of a pun there. Uh, but anyway, this is the lineup, of course, that has uh, Paul Diano, Steve Harris, uh, Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, and Clive Burr. Uh, Clive is still the drummer on here. He, the rest, the band, uh, besides Paul, were all the same for the famous Number of the Beast album, which came next. But of course, that was the first album with Bruce on vocals. So what I really like about this album is the fact that it captures that early Iron Maiden sound. Those first two albums are uh, kind of special to a lot of Maiden fans. I'm not taking anything away from later Maiden. I mean, I love it. I love Iron Maiden, you know, throughout most of their career. I mean, I like what they're doing now. But, uh, you know, the further Maiden went... They became more progressive, um, a, almost a prog metal band at, at certain times, especially some of their later releases. But this album is just, it's pretty raw, and it shows Maiden in their early stages. And, you know, you can see some of the guitar play in there. Uh, you know, it's it's got that driving, um, you know, bass line from Steve Harris without quite as much of the galloping uh, style that he did later. This almost has an element of punk to it. Uh, it's pretty raw and it just, I love the sound of it. I, I just, I just think this is a kick-ass record and I hate the fact that it's only an EP. Now I know, uh, there's versions out there on YouTube where you can hear the whole thing and I believe that, um, I'm with the whole thing, the whole concert, because they recorded the whole concert, uh, but they haven't officially ever released it. 
I think that maybe the fan club members might have got a full uh, CD of the whole concert at some point, maybe a few years ago or something. But as far as I know, uh, there has never been an official release, like anything on vinyl, which is what I want. I know there's bootleg copies out there, but I don't really want that. I don't want the lower sound quality. I want the quality that's on here, and I'd like to get a copy on vinyl. But as far as I know, that's never been done. So the track listing on this uh, from the first album on side one, we've got Running Free and Remember Tomorrow. Both sound great. Uh, side two, we have Wrathchild, Killers, and Innocent Exile, which, you know, that's something right there, Innocent Exile. I mean, you know, you're never going to hear that on any of the other Live Maiden albums. What I don't understand is with all the live shit that uh, Maiden has put out over the years, I just find it hard to believe that they never went back and re-released this as, the you know, the full concert. Anyway. Uh, my review of this, like I'm saying here, is I just think this is a great album. And to me, you know, it goes, I'm not saying that it necessarily matches up with this, but I mean, for what it is, I like it just as much. Um, because I really enjoy that era of Iron Maiden. And to see it represent, or to hear it represented uh, in this form is just, you know, a great little keepsake to go along with it since there was such little material. You know, we only had two albums. So to hear the live stuff with the Paul Diano era, that's pretty cool. I, you know, for you Maiden fans out there, uh, maybe who didn't get into them at that point, uh, for, or, you know, because of age or whatever, I highly recommend getting that album. It's worth it. Uh, you know, as you can see, my copies kind of been through the mill a little bit. But the record itself is in good shape, and uh, I like I like this little thing on the on the record too of, of early Eddie in there. I think that looks pretty cool. I always like that too, the old gray and white look about it. But uh, Made in Japan, I recommend it, and I will say, um, you know, as far as an album of more of the material from that time with Paul Diano, there was a CD that Paul put out back in, I don't know, 2001. This, uh, The Beast, Paul Diano, The Beast, it's called. And it's him at that time doing just a bunch of songs from, the, from those first two albums. So obviously, uh, you know, it's Paul in 2001, not 1981. So he doesn't sound as good on here as he did back then. It's not, you know, it's it's his backing band. It's not Iron Maiden. But, um, you know, if you're a fan of that era, I feel like it's worth having. It does still have some pretty cool moments on it. Doesn't match up at all as if this would have been a full album, but it's still something to pick up, uh, you know, maybe just so you can hear some of that stuff live. So anyway, that's my review for that. Uh, it's definitely a pickup. I think that uh, if you're a Maiden fan and you don't have it, you really should get it because it's a lot of fun to listen to. It's really raw. It's just, you know, pretty heavy. So if you have any comments on it, uh, if you own it, or, you know, what's your opinions, some of your favorite Maiden albums, things like that, any comments, I appreciate it. You can leave them below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, I would love that. I'm Gary, and this has been another episode of Physical Format Rock and Roll. Until next time.